Hey guys, it's Andrew or Feel No Pain. Today I'm bringing you a game a lot of people are probably going to hate on me for. But that aside, I felt it was uh, kind of necessary for a few personal reasons. Uh, this is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Uh, this is, aside from a very short amount of time playing Modern Warfare 3 on the PC, this is the first Call of Duty I've played on the PC. Um, really the first shooter, especially online, other than that, that I've played on the PC as well. So as you'll see from my gameplay, there's there's moments where I do some pretty derpy things. But I did my best to get uh, a few halfway decent games where I, you know, ran around and got at least a handful of kills, went positive kill-death ratio and everything. Because, you know, keep it interesting for you guys. But what I really want to talk about this isn't... It, it's it's not my standard today. I'm, I'm not going to be talking about time and cost value. I'm just going to let you know that the game's $60 still. Uh, plus, if you want to get the... Uh, the uh, what was it? The season pass. That's another 50 So that's that's uh, $110 if you want like the works. If you think you're going to want it that bad and keep playing it for a year. So, um, I, I, I don't want to do that because... I, I don't feel that this game is good enough to tell anyone, any stranger that I don't know, um, that they need this game for $110 or even for $60. Uh, there's a lot of pros and cons, so I'm just going to kind of spend this throwing those out there and uh, kind of let you decide for yourself. I, I feel that's fair. Uh, the other thing I usually do is I go over PC specs and all that nonsense and what you need. This is very intensive. You do need a pretty good PC to run it. Of course, there's Xbox and uh, PlayStation versions as well, which are just fine. Nothing wrong with those. Uh, I played the Xbox One version for a uh, good little while. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to put those on the screen. I'm just going to start doing that from now on. I'm just going to write the uh, necessary specs, um, have them pop up on the screen. So if you want to look at those and check them against your computer, write them down. You can just copy it off the little uh, annotations that come up. So with that being said... And if you're not too busy reading those, I'll get started on the pros and cons of this game. It's going to uh, probably take a little bit because I wanted to be pretty in-depth with it. But the pros that I see are... Uh, it's gorgeous. This is a gorgeous game. I'm actually... Uh, because it's very uh, intensive to run, I couldn't use OBS like I normally do. I had to use uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay, which is a godsend. It pretty much doesn't affect your play at all. I was still running 91 frames per second pretty consistently. It would drop into the 80s occasionally, but I was running high frame rate the entire time, and the video uh, was running at 60 frames per second. Um, the only problem, and you might notice, um, the graphics aren't actually as good as they really are, if you've ever played this or seen other videos that are done on higher-end computers in crazy 60 frames, uh, you know, 1080 with like crazy high bit rates. If you've watched any other videos, you might see that this one looks a little smushed. That's because I was playing on my uh, 1920 by 1200 uh, resolution monitor, so it does crunch it a little to get the uh, regular 1080 for YouTube. But regardless, it, even even with the downgraded graphics uh, from the recording, it still looks beautiful. And in game, it's even crazier. So, I will give it that. It, it looks great. Uh, secondly, and more importantly than the graphics, but I wanted to do that first, is the movement. The movement and the gunplay. Uh, I love how it feels in this game. Like I said, I'm not used to playing shooters on PC. So, it took me a solid 10 to 15 games just to sort of get my mind wrapped around all the buttons and the keyboard and using the mouse to look instead of a thumbstick and I mean I was a console warrior for God eight years on Call of Duty games so rewiring my brains taken a good bit of time um, that aside now that I've kind of gotten used to it and I recorded these this morning when uh, when I did feel like after last night I'd kind of gotten a good handle on it and uh, my gameplay wouldn't be absolutely terrible, but I still make some sort of noobish, you know, moves, and you'll see that I get shot in the back a lot, and I'm not paying attention because I'm still trying to figure out how to press 19 buttons at once, but 
it's working. It's working so far. Um, when I do get it right, though, the movement feels fluid. It feels smooth. Like right there. Um, jumping down on somebody and then meleeing just... It doesn't feel glitchy or laggy or anything too bad. No worse than any other Call of Duty has, anyway. But uh, beyond that, the the, uh, the gameplay. The gameplay is very satisfying. I feel like in this one, more than some other recent ones, getting a kill is very... Uh, yeah, it's very satisfying. Just you feel good when it happens because there, people are jumping and dashing and moving so quick that it really... Um, the skill cap for it is a lot higher than previous games because it's more three-dimensional. And um, that makes me feel good when I have a good game that, like, oh, I was actually jumping around and I actually boosted around that corner to keep from dying. And I really aimed well to kill that guy that was in midair. So there, there is that sort of feeling of uh, accomplishment that wasn't in recent games. So I do feel like that's a plus. And also, kind of on the same uh, feel of things, I like that they added the exoskeleton, the exosuit, um, and the movement abilities that come with it. And the, well, not just the movement ones, but all the abilities that come with it. There's the cloak, there's the uh, uh, overclock, I think, which is uh, makes you run faster. Uh, the one I really like that I think is kind of a game changer is the hover. Which, uh, I just got, I don't think I have it yet, but the last couple videos I recorded, and I'm not sure if I used any of them, but I, uh, I had the hover, and it's, it's really fun, because you can, if you know someone's somewhere, and if they know you're coming for them, you can just jump out into the open and sit there in midair, and they'll kind of naturally, uh, start aiming back towards the ground, because they know you're coming back down, but then if you just hang there in midair and shoot them... It, it, it's a really good feeling. You feel like you've, uh, like you, you did something that was unexpected and therefore you won a gunfight because you made a decision as opposed to, you know, lag comp or, you know, all, all of the other reasons that these games still to this day have, you know, oh, I shot first, but they got the kill because they're lagging, I'm lagging, the server or the host is lagging, um, there's there's a lot more ways to feel like you got a solid kill based on your intelligence and based on your sort of uh, forethought when going into gunfights, and I like that because I was I was getting pretty tired of the uh, Call of Duty just run along the ground and that's kind of all you can do because when you run up to someone it's really twitch reflexes, and I feel like this has a little more to it than that, and. I'm not saying it's the most, uh, you know, it's the, not the most thought-provoking game in the world by any means, but the fact that you can use your smarts to get into or out of a situation a little in, in clever ways, uh, that that makes it, I don't know, gives it more replayability to me. And, and like I said, I've played Call of Duty games since Call of Duty 4, which was, uh, I'm trying to think, I think that was eight years ago. So the, the desire to play this was not there. I, I almost didn't, but I felt because I've spent so much time on these games that I, it, it needed to, I just needed to vocalize in a permanent fashion that would at least be somewhere, you know? Even if it's only just my friends watching or a couple friends or the people that feel bad for me because I have 13 subscribers. Even if it's just those people watching, or even if it's me going back and watching it in five years and laughing at it or agreeing with it, I, I felt like it was at least worth doing for that reason. But the other pros to this game that I like, especially because this one's different, is the supply drops. Um, I like the fact that after a certain amount of time, regardless of whether you're doing good or bad, you'll get a little care package after a game and you get to open it. And you, that's the, the majority of the way how you get the variants of guns. The uh, elite variants and the... Uh, I forget what they're all called. There's like hardened or something like that. There's like multiple... There's ten different versions of every gun. And uh, they have slight differences such as... Uh, they can have increased damage or increased range or increased or reduced uh, magazine size. 
and it gives you a lot more to try out. There's uh, there's definitely there's definitely more uh, I don't know variety, and it is the same gun ten different times. But when you get a gun, say there's one called the ASM, and it's a submachine gun, but then you get a, a variant called the Speakeasy, which is basically a Tommy gun. Uh, it has something crazy like 65 rounds in a magazine, which is absolutely insane. It's like having extended magazines twice, and that's cool. But there are downsides. Like I believe the damage on that is ridiculously low because I'm pretty sure. And this is just me talking. This has nothing to do with the game, but I'm pretty sure, like the the original Tommy guns, they they uh, shot like 22 bullets, nine millimeter. I don't know, something like, but really, really small uh, bullets. And so it would make sense that they would reduce the damage because um, they're not they're not high uh, high damage um, rounds that it's firing. So I think even at a distance with that variant of it, it can take like eight shots to kill, which in Call of Duty is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, most guns are three to five shots to kill. But it's cool that you can do that because you have so many in your magazine, you can just bullet hose people. And that uh, changes the way you play as opposed to maybe sitting back a little bit, especially because the ASM is an accurate weapon, pretty accurate for a submachine gun. Uh, instead of sitting back, and maybe taking those uh, medium range kills, you'll actually get up in people's faces and just try to jump around them and just bullet hose like crazy. And it's fun. It's fun that with two variants of the same gun, you can play completely differently. Uh, especially when you start adding attachments and all that. It, it, it gives it even more like replayability than older Call of Duties where you just had attachments. And and that's that's a pro too. And the last part, and I guess I kind of just went over it, was we uh, weapon variety. There's about the amount of weapons you'd figure there would be in a Call of Duty game. There's something, there's around 20, uh, if you include, like, shotguns and, you know, submachine guns, assault rifles, light machine guns. But there's also energy weapons, which work differently. And actually, I'll get back to one of those when I go through the cons, because it's not really a problem with the weapon, it's a problem with the game. But, um... Then you've got 10 different versions of each of those. So you've got 200 weapons, and they may not all be wildly different, but there's a lot to experiment with. And that, if nothing else, is interesting for a while. Um, none of this matters if you just straight up hate the way the game plays or hate Call of Duties in general. But it's, uh, for me, and like I said, I've played for so long. It, it was, it, it's keeping me into it longer than it rightfully should, probably. It's uh, seven hours so far on PC, and I don't completely hate it yet. So that's saying something for me, because I'm so burned out on the series. But that's pretty much it for the pros, and that was actually a lot. Uh, that was a lot more than I initially expected to have. I went into this with... Uh, I thought I was just going to rage for 20 minutes, and you guys were going to hear me just be pissed off, and that was going to be it. And then I played it for a while, and I remembered some of the stuff that really does make it kind of cool. And uh, I did play through the campaign on uh, on PC just to see how it was, and uh, frame rates are solid, and... It, it felt great, it looked great, the cutscenes, or uh, I guess the in-game cutscenes, because they use in-game graphics for them, but the in-game cutscenes are uh, fantastic looking. Um, there is definitely a, uh, a bit of an upgrade from playing it on Xbox One, which I did as well. So, that's nice. It was nice to see. It is not the end of the world, and I wouldn't have paid 60 bucks just for the single player, as I would say none of you should. It's a Call of Duty game. It's... A six to eight hour single player and sixty dollars for it. This story's okay. They try, but it it is it is what it is. It's an arcade shooter, and arcade shooters are not meant to have deep, engrossing storylines that make you feel all sort of emotions and craziness. Um, I'll tell you right now, you can pretty much tell what's going to happen at the end of the story within the first half hour, and without giving spoilers, that's meh. <laughs> But it's a good campaign. Um, it's well laid out. It's uh, intriguing at first. You do learn how the exosuits come into play, which is pretty neat. And 
you also have Kevin Spacey, who voiced and did, I believe he did the mocap, because they, they've got his, his likeness in the game as one of the characters, so he must have done mocap for it, too. And he's one of my favorite actors, so that kind of hooked me. But it, it is cool that it's getting to the point where it's, it's movie level, where big-name actors are willing to step in and do characters for these games. Um, like I said, not necessarily because it's, you know, the next big, you know, epic that's gonna, you're gonna need a box of tissues for is gonna just, like, leave a lasting impact. Just, just because it, it's, the graphics of games are getting that good, and it's nice to see that people have that kind of, uh, I don't know. They, they feel that there's, there's enough two games now that they warrant having, you know, big name actors and everything in them. So, that's cool. Um... That's pretty much it for the pros, and now I'm going to get a little ragey as I talk about this. I have a feeling because I'm just looking at my list, and it's already happening. <sighs> okay, so the first thing I encountered when I tried to play, and this is all about multiplayer, and this even applied to Xbox One a little when I played it on there, but the first thing was connection problems. This game, since its inception, has had some of the worst connections and lag of any Call of Duty. I don't know what it is. It's still peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, I've heard stories that there are dedicated servers, but not nearly enough to keep up with the entire player base, which makes sense. Um, which would mean that occasionally you would get into a game with dedicated servers. I only know that that's a fact on Xbox One. I don't know anything about that for PC. But from what I can tell, um, most of the games were pretty similar. I didn't see any that were significantly different. Um, so I would say if there are, it's not noticeable from other Call of Duty games. There's a... Uh, the big problem I had was with connection was the NAT type in the game is your basically your connection quality. Um, it, it determines basically how many things are blocking information coming in. So if if there's a lot of things, which could be firewalls, which could be antivirus, which could be like I said, so much it could be your router, it could be your modem, uh, which all have their own separate firewalls usually. Um, any of those things blocking stuff will wreck your NAT type. Basically, there's three. Open is the best, moderate is obviously moderate, and strict is bad. People with strict NAT type can only play with other people with strict NAT type, and you'll often get against people that are, say, I live in Ohio, so you can get with people that live in, you know, Europe, or the West Coast, or you know, even farther, and the first, I got into a couple games, the, when I first got it, and I had a strict NAT type, and I was like, well, let's see how bad this is, half the people, including myself, were on red bar, uh, lag, which is, from what I can tell, close to a half second lag, I was dead around corners before I could even see anyone, um, I would shoot people, and they would just absorb the bullets, and it wouldn't even hurt them, it was absolutely terrible. So I told myself I was going to do something about this. I was going to fix this. I was going to find a way to get my NAT type to open. Four hours later, I finally decided to completely unhook my uh, wireless router, which was chained from my modem to my computer. So it goes internet into my modem from my cable company, into the wireless router, and then out of that into my PC. So I was actually having to, before that, I spent all that time port forwarding. And I'm actually going to put the ports that you need to forward for this game on PC on here. So if any of you want to play it, you know how to do this immediately. Um, I was doing port forwarding, which is basically opening pathways through your firewalls on specific... Um, specific um, ports think of it kind of like if your cell phone blocked every incoming number you port forwarding would be like unblocking certain people's numbers so only those can get through and uh 
So I had to look that up. I had to port forward those on my wireless router. I had to port forward those through my uh, McAfee antivirus, and I still couldn't get it to work. It was still it was it was still strict NAT type, and I actually was at the point where it wouldn't even let me connect to the Xbox servers. So I decided to cut the middleman. I moved my wireless router out to the other room, connected it directly to the modem, so there was no like. There was no secondary uh, set of port forwarding I had to do, only on the McAfee antivirus on my computer, and then it worked. Then, after restarting all my routers, restarting my computer, since then I've been on open NAT type, which I don't have a bad internet connection at all. So there was no reason that I should legitimately have had a strict NAT type. It's just that there's all this crap you have to go through, and... I don't feel that there has to be a way around that. It wasn't always like that. Like I said, I even had this problem on Xbox One. Um, I didn't have to do the port forwarding, but I would have to constantly reset my router to get it to work. And it was just, it feels buggy as hell. Like older, older Call of Duties, I never had to do that to play. I never had problems with that. I always had an open NAT type, but this one is just ridiculous and so hard to get to work now after four hours i got it to work and it's been fine since so if you don't mind some setup um you can do it a lot faster than i did i would tell you that if there's any possible way i would tell you don't play this through a wireless router for god's sake don't play it wireless you want a wired connection but if there's any way you can set it up to your wireless router from home... Oh, and here's a fun little glitch I found. I tried to use a UAV and it wouldn't bring my gun back out. But um, the big thing is, if you want to if you want to do it... Um, if you have a wireless router and there's any way that you can connect your, your uh, cable modem or whatever modem you have, it's Windstream or whatever, um, whatever modem you have that comes from the cable company or that your cable comes directly into, if you can connect, connect that directly to your PC somehow... That's the way to go. That made it easier for me. Cut out the crap, and then all you have to do is you port forward through your uh, firewall, or um, usually your uh, antivirus will have a firewall built in. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, huge pain in the ass. But, um, like I said, I will put... Um, I did put that... If you want to go back and pause, I uh, put the ports you'll need to forward in there so you won't have to go searching like I did and spend all that time but uh, the second con and this isn't really <laughs> it, it's funny because this isn't a problem necessarily with the game but I think it's sort of a uh, problem because of these problems is a low player base uh, the PC has so few people on it at any given time uh, even Xbox One last time I played only would be running at peak hours like 20,000 people online, which is insane. Um, Black Ops 2, towards the end of its life cycle, had over 100,000, I think even at times two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 people online at any given time, and especially during peak hours. And this, like, on PC, we're talking like 5,000 people. Which is, like, ghosts died off pretty quick. And this, this is just so, so much worse. I think what it is, is people are, uh, sorry about that. I felt like I was going to cough. My throat's been hurting. But, um, I feel like people have kind of given up. Ghosts really wrecked the series. And... Probably could have made a video on that, and there'd have been some good stuff, but there'd have been a good bit of bad, too. So, um, I, I feel like people have kind of given up, especially on PC, because PC doesn't get the love it deserves, or it wants, I guess, for uh, Call of Duty games. Like, the, even this one is a slightly uh, graphically prettier direct port. And that's really, really all it is. There isn't anything else special except the field of view slider. You can put it up to 90 degree field of view, which is nice. Um, that's what I'm playing on. And if you've played on console, you can actually notice between that and this that there's a lot more visibility. 
Which is good because I'm a derp and I don't see people, so having that extra 25 degrees is really nice. But yeah, the low player base kind of makes it difficult. Um, if there's a game that you don't like or the people are just so like skilled above you, um, then you can back out and try to get new people, but you'll probably get put it back in with the same same group, which means you just kind of have to tough it out, and maybe it'll make you a better player, but it gets frustrating. Um, the other thing that bothers me, and this has been in, I don't know if it's been in all Call of Duties or just recent ones, but um, I know the last few have had built-in lag, which is sounds stupid, and if, there, if there's a reason for it, I don't know what it is, and it's basically built into the engine there is lag, where... Uh, that sort of feeling where you get shot around a corner, you run around a corner and you still get shot, um, that exists in this in every online game because of the internet. However, the last couple Call of Duties have had built into the engine a certain amount of that lag. And maybe it's so that the difference between people with you know 100 ping and 50 ping don't feel so different because there's another like so many milliseconds added on to that and the difference instead of being 50% would then be like 30 or something. I, I see the point kind of, but in the last couple games that built in lag has been like 20 to 30 milliseconds, which in terms of frames, like if you're playing at 60 frames per second is one to two frames. That's not bad. That is, you won't notice that at all. In this game, the built-in lag is between 80 and 130 milliseconds. I do believe those are the numbers, correct numbers, or 60 to 130, something like that. I got this off uh, Drifter's, Drifter's channel. He's a great guy that does in-depth videos, and he was talking about it, and it just blew my mind. But basically what it is, is it's tons higher than it used to be. Like, And that would be somewhere between 4 and 8 frames, or you know, a tenth of a second. Call it around a tenth of a second, that's 100 milliseconds. That's crazy, that's built-in lag. And then on top of that, you also have the lag from your internet connection, which is even um, making it even laggier, really. And so the fact that they did that boggles my mind. I don't know what they thought they were accomplishing, but... It, it, it is noticeable. Even on the best games, you'll still get shot around walls and stuff like that. And it's something you either choose to deal with or you don't. It's it's just part of the game at this point. And unless they fix it in future versions of the game, uh, I don't think it's it's going anywhere. Like it, it's, it's been a thing for a few games, and you just kind of got to put up with it. But it... it if you get into the into a game, if you really get focused, you don't notice it so much or it doesn't bother you so much, but at first it's pretty jarring. Um, so yeah, that's it. And as always, this will come as no surprise to anyone that's played Call of Duty. Even on PC, I was hoping that you might get a few decent people, but for the most part, you still hear the vocal minority, people swearing and being obnoxious, and it's the volatile COD community. It's just everyone suddenly acts like they're six years old, stepped on a Lego, and just fuck shit, piss everything. And I hate that. I'm not that guy when I play games. I will usually GG just about anyone. If, if you beat me, you probably deserved it. Um, this game makes me want to fight back. And I don't even know, you might even see on here somewhere where I typed a message for someone to get out the fucking corner because it just puts me in that place when people are talking on voice chat and they're just, just being children about it. And I get that that's just a thing that happens and the vocal minority is always going to be the ones that, you know, bug the piss out of you because they're the loudest and most obnoxious and that guy just blew himself the fuck up. But... <sighs> I apologize for all the swearing if it's something that offends you, but that's been the one thing that's bothered me about Call of Duty for the longest time is just it probably has one of the worst communities as far as like playing online. You can't go a game without just hearing people pissing and moaning and having a horrible time. It's hard to have fun when that's happening. Uh, like I said, once again, if you get really into a game, you can you can make it happen, but 
you can kind of forget that that's going on, but it's really difficult at times. And here's the last thing, and it's kind of... I'm going to make it quick because I'm almost out of video, but... It uses an, uh, Call of Duty still uses an old, extremely modified Quake engine. Quake! We're talking like 12 years old. And that means that there is some stuff that makes it very not modern when it comes to the playability. And the big thing is, and I thought this was interesting, and it's really relevant on PC, you... Everything you shoot shoots based on your frame rate. So... Like, if a gun's supposed to shoot at 900 um, rounds per minute, your frame rate drops from 60 to 59, and it might shoot at 830. And if it drops another couple, it might shoot at 970. And it has to fire on a frame. So if you have a varying frame rate and it's not steady, you could actually change the the time to kill of your weapon or your frame rate could change the time to kill of your weapon by anywhere from probably about 10 to 25 percent depending on if it goes both directions uh, down and up so there's a lot of times where you feel like you've got a gun that outclasses another gun at a certain range and despite all the lag and this and that and the other thing that people are throwing at you um, or the game's throwing at you, you feel like you should win a gunfight, but sometimes you won't just because your frame rate dictates that. Like I said, I was I'm lucky enough that I can run it at, at 91 frames solid, which is the the max the game has. But it, if if you're not running it at that, I I suggest lowering uh, the graphic settings and everything until you can, because running at a steady frame rate is the most important thing, because of how it rounds the uh, the firing rate. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, it's, like I said, it's the way the engine's built. And the worst part about that is the EM-1. It's one of the energy weapons, which is the coolest idea. Uh, it, it actually fires every frame for a low amount of damage, like 6 damage, and you have 100 health. Um, problem is, if, you, if you're getting 10 frames per second, that means it'll take you 1.7 seconds to kill someone. If you have 90 frames per second, you'll kill someone super fast like a fifth of a second and that's insane that's absolutely obnoxious that the same gun coming from two people makes that much of a difference um that's just how it is though i i guess that's um until they build a new engine for call of duty it's gonna have to be that way but the way that gun is built is awful for this engine and people bitch a lot about the EM-1 as a noob gun because, yeah, if you have a high frames per second, if you're running at 90 frames per second, or God knows if you found a way to break the limiter and up it to like 150, 200 frames per second, melt people with that gun. It's not even funny. It's not even fair. So that's my last thing. Um, that's really my last thing as far as this goes. Uh, pros and cons are out there. I want you guys to make your own decisions. I really want you guys to, uh, if you want to drop 60 bucks on this game because you think you'll like it after everything I've said, go for it. However, I can't recommend it to anyone because there's so much in this game that should have been fixed over the life cycle of Call of Duty that it just makes me sad. It really does. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.